first and foremost, let's talk about the new managers coming in because a lot of them had a big impact. I'm talking about Steven Gerrard, Dean Smith, both got wins on their home debuts at Aston Villa and Norwich, respectively. Antonio Conte got a win in his first home game in charge of Spurs in the Premier League. So new managers are doing okay. Eddie Howe didn't make it um, to Newcastle's game because he had a positive COVID-19 test, but he's doing okay by all accounts. And Newcastle are going to draw against Brentford, which all things considered isn't a bad result uh, for the kind of squad they took over and the situation they took over. But Andy Edwards, I'm going to start with you because I know Steven Gerrard in particular caught your eye over the weekend, didn't he? Yeah, he did. And, and I was impressed with what we saw from Aston Villa on, on the weekend. It was really late before they got their goals. They did get their goals. But the thing that was most important to me, it was the exact thing that we talked about last week. Make Aston Villa defend well. Give them a foundation to build on. And this can be a good team going forward. We know the names in the attack. They don't have, I don't think, either the midfield or the defense early in the season to really give them what they need to try to win games. They can score goals, but they're going to lose 3-2. And so what Gerard has done so far uh, in just a couple of training sessions and one game, he got them very, very organized. He got everybody working together in the same direction. I think that was very important, and it was a noticeable difference from what we saw during the final days of the Dean Smith era. So uh, it is a very early returns. It's one game for Steven Gerrard as a manager in the Premier League, but he's clearly a very, very sharp guy. He's got good ideas. He gets the players to buy into them. And I think the thing we can't look past is probably, I don't know, at least half the team there at Villa, uh, and especially the ones that grew up in England, grew up idolizing Steven Gerrard. They are of that age. He is of that age. The chance to play for him and be inspired by him, I think, is just such a pull for some of these players that he could go on and have a really, really good managerial career. Yeah, Stevie G, the way he was celebrating on the sidelines there, it was like I was looking for the captain's armband and the red Liverpool shirt. It just kind of brought back so many memories. Um, but what I loved, Andy, is that defensively they were solid. That's what we said he would bring. Um, it may not be exciting, but that's what they needed, the stability. And you could clearly see when Brighton had a lot of the ball, which they always do, there was a solid back four. And then the midfield was set. The wingers were tucking. And then already after only two training sessions, he'd already got Villa to be a much more solid, uh, just stable unit, which is what they needed to do, like you said, because they have the attacking players, as you saw with Ollie Watkins uh, late on, to deliver the goods. And uh, I love the passion. And I love that Villa already seems to reflect his character as a player and as a manager now. And that's pretty impressive to get that message over that quickly. So he did a great job. Dean Smith did a great job. Uh, first game in charge of Norwich. They beat Southampton. Come back win. A few tactical changes at halftime from him. US men's national team forward Josh Sargent came on at halftime and upped the tempo and helped Norwich surge back in uh, to that game, into the lead. And they hung on against the Saints. So back-to-back -back wins for Norwich. And all of a sudden... Uh, people are starting to say, well, maybe they could launch a great escape. Maybe they can get out of it. Might be a bit too early for that talk, but he did pretty well. And, and Nick, I want to ask you about Newcastle United. Eddie Howe's come in. As we've mentioned, he didn't uh, actually witness the St. James's Park atmosphere for the first game in charge because he had COVID-19, a, a positive test with that. So his assistants, Jason, Jason Tindall and Graham Jones, they were on the sidelines at St. James's. What did you see different from them? Because obviously it was a cracker of a game, three all against Brentford. That's probably what we can expect with this Newcastle side, right? Because Eddie Howe and Bournemouth used to do it week in, week out, uh, six goal and seven goal thrillers. Yeah, and they're, they aren't really star defenders in Newcastle. I, both times now, it's happening again. The sun has come up brighter through my windows and forced all kinds of when we've mentioned Newcastle United. So perhaps they Ooh. are breaking through the dark clouds uh, that, that have dogged their performances this season. Look, six losses and six draws this year. They have not been able to defend. And I don't know that the defenders are there. There are good players there who can defend. It's going to take time for any manager to sort them out in terms of their center backs. Uh, their fullbacks are also a major problem right mm -hmm. now. Uh, Javi Manquillo has been okay. So what do you do? Well, you put in the midfielders, and listen, John Joe Shelby being healthy is a big deal, but you put in the midfielders, the big bodies, and the attackers um, who can get you the most amount of goals possible. And right now, what I was kind of excited about, although he had a brutal miss as well, is Eddie Howe uh, and Jason Tindall looking at Joe Ellington and saying, listen, we spent a lot of money on you. Maybe it's just that people haven't figured out what worked for you at Hoffenheim. Let's figure it out. And very encouraging to see him score. Yeah, of course. It's going to be really intriguing uh, to see how they do 
as we get deeper and deeper into the season. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch highlights all season long and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend at 7 a.m. Eastern. And for even more content, head over to Peacock, where we've got live games, original series and a dedicated round-the-clock Premier League channel featuring studio shows, classic matches and much more.